In this video, we're going to look back on the year that was. I'm James Fisher, and this is Vintage Illumination Photography. I started this YouTube channel in 2020 as my response to the COVID-19 pandemic sweeping our area and the country. Through this YouTube channel, I've had the opportunity to photograph many things and travel many places and hopefully provide some vintage illumination. Let's take a look at the very first video I published on this YouTube channel. It was my prototype to see if I could actually do this type of vlogging. The subject was the sunrise over Lake Huron and featuring a simple single boat hoist on the water. So I'm actually filming this portion after I've done the photo shoot uh, this morning, but I didn't do an introduction beforehand. So the idea was to head to the beach. I had scouted out the other day, a really nice location uh, with a boat hoist and a boat on it. And I uh, thought that would be a spectacular uh, sunrise photograph with some neutral density filters. So we're here getting this set up and uh, kind of a beautiful, beautiful vista this morning. Um, I don't think with this shot you'll be able to see the sunrise coming up. We then traveled to Holland, Michigan to photograph the Big Red Lighthouse as the moon was setting and the sun was rising. And it started my series that I'm working on of photographing all the lighthouses in Michigan with some type of astrological phenomenon. So the moon's setting, ambient light's coming up. We should work out just about perfect. I'm getting pretty close to the shot I had envisioned. Kind of see right there, the moon's just gotta come down a little bit and uh, we should be golden right about the time we get the blue hour right where we want it to be. Be right there, the moon dropping down over the over the lighthouse. We're getting really close, really close to our shot. And um, just waiting for the ambient light to pick up a little bit so the tube can balance out and the moon won't be blown out. That's my that's actually my hope and goal is that we can actually see the man in the moon um, along with the lighthouse and the cloud cover in the sky. seeing right now come down and look look at that we then traveled to a local nature center to walk through the woods do some macro photography work and to introduce my love of vintage lenses. So I saw this little guy right here, this mushroom, and uh, that's what I really want to get. Now I've got a um, 10 millimeter extension tube on this. I'm still using that uh, Minolta 55 millimeter F17 lens, and I'm gonna do handheld. So for working without autofocus, one thing you can do is pre-focus on a point, leave that focus lever alone, and then ever so slightly float yourself backwards and forwards until you hit that exact focus point and then depress your shutter. Much easier than continuing to try to turn that little focus dial and uh, when you're moving and the focus dial is moving, it's too many moving parts. Keep the focus locked down, move yourself back and forth, just float back and forth until you get that sharp focus you're looking for. Our next stop was a nighttime photo shoot of our own Fort Gratiot Lighthouse. This video was very special in that it introduced my wife Michelle for the very first time on this YouTube channel. Let's take a look. So we've arrived at the park and we're parked, we're ready to go and get set up to photograph the lighthouse. And uh, for the first time with me, I've got my, my wife here, Michelle. She's gonna be my assistant, our assistant, 
on this, uh, this photographing the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse tonight. So this is kind of where we're, where we are right now and what we're looking at. We've got the lighthouse. This is the still image of what I just took. And of course, you're gonna see the finished image before, before me, um, you've already seen it. So here we are, the worst, worst light ever for a portrait <laughs> photographer and his wife. I'm sure we look absolutely horrendous in this, but I think we actually got the photograph we're looking for with the moon set over the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse here in Port Huron, Michigan. After photographing the moon at the Fort Gratiot Lighthouse, we shifted gears to a sunrise of our area's own blue water bridges to show a time lapse of a sunrise. But as often happens, not everything went perfectly as you're gonna see. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. Oh, the good times just begun. We know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright started our time lapse this morning at the Blue Water Bridge. I've got the uh, camera set to ISO 200, f5.6, a quarter second exposure at two second intervals. Well, that was embarrassing and disturbing beyond um, what I care to admit. My battery died in the camera. The Algoma Buffalo out of St. Catharines. There she goes. Michelle and I then had the opportunity to travel to the Kentucky and Tennessee border to photograph the Land Between the Lakes National Park. When we were there, not only was the weather incredibly dry, but so was all the photographic opportunities. Let's take a look. <laughs> all right, we find ourselves today at the Land Between the Lakes National Park in the Golden Pond Recreation Trailhead. Now the land between the lakes is right between um, the states of Kentucky and Tennessee. And it's, a, it's almost an island that runs between. Now, what are we gonna find here today? I have no idea. We're here in the middle of the afternoon. Um, it's about 4.30 local time. Um, so we should be starting to get some nice light and maybe some sunsets. Join us on the trail and we'll see what we find. So wandering, 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 up hills. It's like, like when your parents had to go to school and everything was uphill both ways. <laughs> that's, that's what this trail feels like today. And nothing, not one shot yet. All right, so what I found as we were walking, we were walking along is this lone leaf on this stump with the moss. See kind of how I have it framed. Um, I'm using the law of thirds, so I've got it right in that uh, lower right quadrant or lower right third pattern, and I can do some other cropping from there. But I really like how the light is coming through and isolating that a little selective dodging and burning, and I might really, really have something right there.
After returning back home, we did what turned out to be my one and only portrait photography video of all of 2020. The subject was my wife, Michelle, and we were able to do an outdoor portrait session. Now, as a former full-time professional portrait photographer, we are definitely gonna be doing more portrait work in this upcoming year. So today we're gonna to be doing two things. First, we're gonna be using a vintage lens on the Fujifilm camera. We're gonna be using the Canon 50 millimeter F1.4 SSC lens. And we're gonna be doing some portrait posing demonstration too. What's fun is when I used to do um, a lot of professional portrait work, it was in the days of film. And I was shot 120 film, I shot Hasselblads. And so you'd load a roll of 120 film in, you had 12 exposures. And you'd load a roll of 220, which I only did with weddings, and you had 24 exposures. So I was doing hired portrait sessions in 12 shots. And that's what you had, and that's all you had. Digital film, you can take hundreds. It's, it's just amazing what you can do, and then the quality of the sensors that we have. Um, what, a, what a gift technology has given us. First time I ever saw you I fell in love when you entered the room And when the light hit your face We were just kids but I knew right away That I will be with you until I stop breathing Let your head turn and tip this way this time for me a little bit. So chin down. We got a lot of hair blowing up into your face. I mean I like the hair blowing around but um, a little too much. There we go. Sure, I'm in focus again. I moved a little bit. I will keep loving you as long as my heart beats. There we are. Very nice. Wow. It's me? <laughs> that nice? Very nice. Back in the 1980s we couldn't do that. It's wonderful to be able to show images instantly. And then came two videos that I'm actually the happiest with everything and how they came out. And that was the collaboration with Paul Cook of PC3 Photography in Boca Raton, Florida. We agreed to do a lighthouse challenge, photographing our own local lighthouses over four days to see who could come up with the better photographs. And we could not have picked a worse weather week at all for any of this challenge. Not only were we both pummeled with rain and wind, but the wind actually tipped over Paul's camera and broke it during the challenge. Well, it's day one of the challenge with PC3 Photography, Paul Cook, and we are now sitting outside the lighthouse and it's raining. And um, I don't know what the sunrise is gonna be. We're gonna find out. Luckily, we have four days to see if we can make this challenge work. Well, it looks like day one is a bust. So Michelle and I got up early. I had to rewrite all the numbers on the alarm clock because she write, erases those early numbers off of it. So we're not ever up this early. It looks like I've got no dramatic clouds, um, no bursts of sun coming through or anything. It's now 7.10, we're past the sunrise, and uh, I officially declare day one in Port Huron, Michigan at the Fort Gresham Lighthouse a bust. It is day two of the Lighthouse Challenge and we're heading to the Fort Gratiot Light once again. At least today, as you can see, it's not raining. Sunrise today is just again after 7 a.m. as was yesterday. Hopefully we'll actually see the sun today. Um, we're pretty much cloud covered according to weather reports. But uh, when I look, I see that there's gonna be a break in the clouds right about exactly at sunrise. So we'll see if that actually happens and we can get a beam of light hitting our lighthouse. Watch 
this is my thought for composition. Right here, I've got some trees in the foreground, the lighthouse, and the keeper's station as well. Um, now we're just waiting to see if we have anything happening on this sunrise. We are now at day three of our photographic challenge, and I wonder how Paul is doing down in Florida. I know they're having similar weather to what we are here in Michigan, gray and cloudy. I know when I looked, um, they were talking about thunderstorms down there. Sometimes letting go can make your heart bleed Sometimes the road ahead seems dark as night yeah. Have some faith in yourself, that's the guiding You should know that when your dreams have hit the ceiling and fallen back down on the ground. Let me tell you, I know the feeling I used to live in that town. One door closes, another swings open, that's life. And not to dwell upon The darkest hour, they say Is just before dawn Another absolutely amazing journey that Michelle and I took was to the Cuyahoga Valley National Park in Ohio. What an amazing location, a plethora of things to photograph. And here's some highlights of just a couple of things that we found there. Today we're exploring the Cuyahoga National Park outside of Akron, Ohio. We're gonna to try to hit four different sites today. We're gonna to try to see the um, Bridal Veil Falls, the Brandywine Falls, the Blue Hen Falls, and we're gonna to try to hit one of the covered bridges as well as we go through our exploration. Thanks for joining us. So at ISO 200, I've got a sixth of a second at F22. I normally don't like stopping down that far. Um, I don't feel lenses are as sharp as uh, when you reach those maximum apertures, either fully closed or fully open. Um, you're not utilizing the glass that's in the lens. Uh, F8 is usually my preferred aperture, F8, F11 for most lenses. I think that's where we're the sharpest and that's really where they're engineered to work the best. So if any of you have been watching me for any length of time, you already know my love of photographing mushrooms. Well, here I've got mushrooms and a waterfall that I can combine into one image. So we're gonna be doing that and we're gonna be doing some focus stacking as well in order to combine all these images. That was amazing, and that's only stop one out of hopefully four today. Well, that's location two of today's four that we're trying for, four, four, that we're trying for today. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I put the microphone on and uh, trying to get a little better sound for this one for you, but uh, it's been absolutely a beautiful day um, to explore the Cuyahoga National Park. Spectacular. Spectacular, as the word goes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So we are now on the trail to the ledges. So it looks like we might get five different things in at this uh, national park today, the Cuyahoga National Park. I don't know if there's anything to photograph here at the ledges, but it looks to be a nice hike down the way. This is really an amazing landscape through here. You can see what the what this walk is like. It's just beautiful. Just beautiful. We are heading out of the ledges right now. It is uh, actually much darker than it looks like in this video here. It's uh, it's ethereal, it's eerie. We passed a couple that was going by and they said, this is like the land that time forgot. And it is, you expect a dinosaur or something to be coming out around the next rock outcropping. But this is stunning. It's uh, someplace we're gonna have to come back to and visit because I would love to be able to complete this entire walk of the ledges, but we've got to cut it short today. After returning from Ohio, we were at the beginnings of autumn here in Michigan. And autumn in Michigan can be an incredibly stunning, beautiful time. I ended up doing a series of videos demonstrating polarizer filters, how to capture light, and many different scenarios of photographing both macro work and landscape work in the autumn. Here's a small sampling of just one of these videos. Puppy, how are you? We have a visitor. Hi there. Oh, that's fine. That's pretty funny, actually. We here, and I've got a split screen showing what I'm seeing through the camera as a video. I've had to change the f-stop, though, so the video would read. We can also demonstrate that polarizer filter right here. If I unpolarize the light, you can see all the reflections that are coming in that might be what you want. But also as we turn that CPL filter, it's almost like you get X-ray vision or X-ray spectacles and can see through and into that water. And it just deepens up the colors so nicely. Well, that is gonna wrap up our look back at the year 2020 and this channel of vintage illumination photography. And I wanna thank each and every one of you for helping this channel to be a success. Your comments, your views, everything that you do helps to make this channel a success. But while we're talking about that, there's a couple people that I would like to single out. Um, I would especially like to thank Christine for buying me numerous coffees. Um, that has truly helped and helped this channel to grow and provide some new equipment to improve the quality of the video and audio that we're producing. I'd also like to single out Brennan and Julia for all that they're doing and all their support. I also want to thank Mike who provided a generous gift to some studio microphones and a microphone stand that'll help us provide voiceover work to improve the quality of these videos. 
And again, thanks so much sincerely from the bottom of my heart. I'm James Fisher, and this is Vintage Illumination Photography.